Let's all stand. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Five, six, five, Let's 
pray together. Thank you so much for being in church together tonight. We're looking forward to a wonderful, wonderful time. And uh, would you join me in prayer as we ask the Lord to meet with us. And uh, we've got several things that aspects of the service I trust will be a blessing to you. And uh, we want you to be enjoying all of it. Father, we're grateful for the time to be in your house. Lord, we're so thankful that you've allowed us to assemble back together. One of the greatest joys of the church is the fellowship one with another. And I thank you that we've had some already. And Lord, we look forward to it afterwards, and uh, thank you, dear Lord, for allowing us to gather. I pray that you bless every aspect of it. I ask you, dear Lord, to be in every part of what goes on. May you anoint the preaching, dear Lord. May the singing continue to be an uplifting time as we've already ex experienced. And then, dear Lord, I pray that you bless our uh, good brothers that are here. I pray for Brother Muldoon. I pray, praise you for him being here. Thank you for Brother Joe Martinez being here. Lord, we thank you for Brother Larry Harrison being here. And I just ask you to uh, bless every aspect of it. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you. you. may be seated. And uh, so we're so thankful that uh, you are here. Hopefully on the way in you got to see some uh, books out there. Brother Harrison, they told me you aren't going to come up. Your voice is about shot. But I'm so disappointed because every time I've had Brother Harrison, every time I've been with him, he's let me know how many shopping days till Christmas. That's the thing of the past. Oh, I wouldn't have even had you come. I, I was... It's less than 300. Um, Brother Harrison has been a great, great blessing uh, getting good literature in the hands of thousands of people and good music as well. I think he's got the latest patch, the Pirate uh, CD patch, has, uh, has taught character to uh, families for many, many decades. And so we're thankful for uh, Patch the Pirate, and those CDs are back there, and uh, then other good books. And I trust that afterwards, your fellowship, always good prices, always King James Bible. Bibles and King James uh, Bible books, and uh, so we're certainly thankful to have Brother Harrison here, and I want you to stop and take time afterwards to uh, see the display tables out there and buy some good stuff. He'll be with you out there, and, uh, and you can meet him there. Well, I'm going to ask Brother Daniel to come, and he's going to make some announcements, but then also give a, a presentation recognition tonight, and uh, so we're thankful for him. Brother Daniel, would you come? Well, just a couple things to remind you about. I mentioned this morning we have a special opportunity to be part of a Bible assembly for Bibles that are going to the Ukraine. And so uh, if you are available to uh, come out this coming Tuesday uh, at 7.15, we're going to take a group and leave from the church. 7.15 in the morning, we'll head out to Gunnings Baptist Church. And at 8 o'clock, the assembly will begin. And it'll be done right at noon. There'll be some snacks provided along the way. So if you are available on Tuesday morning and you'd like to be part of that, I would encourage you to see Brother Dan afterwards, let him know uh, that you'll be taking part in that, and if you're going to ride with them, then let him know that, but then also if you're just going to meet him there, just let him know you're coming so that they can know how many uh, of us are going to get to make it out to that. It'll be a wonderful opportunity to serve together, and uh, this is open to everybody in the church. I know a couple uh, weeks ago, the, the Oasis group took a, a trip to do something similar to this, but this is open to everybody, so don't feel like uh, you couldn't do, uh, go do it. If your time allows for it, we'd love to have you be part in this wonderful opportunity for our church to be part of. And then on Thursday evening, we have our 
last outreach in the month of April. We've been going out into the community every Thursday night at 630, just in uh, distributing information out about the church. So if you're available to come, we'd love to have you come. We'll knock on doors. We'll uh, just put uh, tracks or flyers on doors if you're not comfortable knocking, and we'll uh, have a wonderful time with that. So if you're available to come this coming Thursday, I hope you can do that as well. And then I also mentioned this morning that we have a men's prayer breakfast on May the 7th. We want to invite all the men to come to. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful time of fellowship, encouragement. Uh, uh, there'll be a brief devotional at it, but just a time just to get together. That'll be 8 o'clock in the morning on May the 7th, the Saturday. This is about a week, uh, two weeks from yesterday. And so, man, I'd encourage you. You don't want to miss that. It'll be a great time. You'll still have plenty of time throughout the rest of the day uh, to get to all the projects that I'm sure you need to do now that spring has uh, is in full swing. You can do a lot of those things, but you come, uh, get a good breakfast, get some fellowship, get charged up, and then you get out and do those things that you need to do for the day. And it'll be a wonderful, wonderful thing. Well, as Pastor mentioned, we do have a, uh, just a presentation we'd like to make. There's uh, so many people in our church have served in uh, capacities all th for, for many, many years, and we're so thankful for uh, every one of them. And it's always a little bit sad when uh, one has to transition because of uh, different needs and maybe their, their family or their health. And so uh, tonight we want to recognize the Nashes. Brother Mike and Lori Nash have been serving in the bus ministry. If you guys don't mind, you can make your way up here while I'm, while I'm talking about you in ways that you'd never want me to do. In in front of everybody. But the Nashes have served in the bus ministry for uh, 17, 18 years. Uh, I know Brother Mike did, and Lori even longer than that. Uh, but just because of some health issues that, uh, that Brother Mike is having, they're going to have to step out of the bus ministry. They're retiring from it. And we wanted to let you know that we love you, that we're thankful for you, and we're thankful for every bit of time that you've put in, the love that you've given to the boys and girls and the families that have ridden your buses uh, all throughout these years. And I know uh, this is uh, with heavy hearts that you had to make this decision, and uh, we just want you to know that we're thankful uh, for you and all that you've done. So we we'll have just a small gift we want to present you with, just a letter to uh, thank you as well, and uh, wanted the church to, 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 to be part of this, and so we're so thankful for all that you've done. So let's give them a round of applause. We're so thankful for you. And then, Sorry. oh, they're going to get a picture real quick. <laughs> and anybody in the bus ministry knows that those in the bus ministry are shamelessly always looking for more people to be in the bus ministry. And so, while the Nashes are retiring, we want to keep their bus rolling in the areas that it's rolling in. And so, this is the shameless part. If you'd like to get involved in the bus ministry, we want you. And uh, it, is, it is one of the greatest privileges that I've had now in the time that I've been here. I've got to be involved with it some, but then obviously a couple years ago to be able to step into a leadership role in the bus ministry, and it is a joy to work with people like the Nashes and to work with those who are remaining and, and going to continue in the bus ministry, and then to work with you, whoever you are out there in the bus ministry. We'd love to have you, but uh, that, that kind of tongue-in-cheek said, but we, we want to see more people serving in the bus ministry because of the way that it's enabled uh, us in our church to be able to reach into the community. And so if you are interested, uh, all jokes aside, if you are interested in serving, you can come see me after church. Uh, we'd love to get you plugged in. We'd love to get you trained so you know what it takes and uh, all the things that are involved in it. But it'll be a great opportunity for you, as has been for them and for the others uh, who have served in the past and are continuing serving as well. Well, those are all of our announcements at this time. So I'll turn it up. Well, we wanted to introduce you. Some of you got to know him already uh, this morning in Sunday school. And if you don't go to Brother Dan's Sunday school class, then I challenge you to go back this week sometime and watch the archive Sunday school lesson. Uh, because in that time, uh, Brother Dan would have interviewed uh, Brother Muldoon. And uh, he is a, um, a wonderful Christian and is going to plant churches and in in, uh, in, in signing churches in Romania. And I uh, hope that you got to meet him. We moved his uh, display in here right to the, my left. You're right in the rear 
rear of the auditorium. You'll get to be, slip by there after the service. But I've asked him to come, and here's what he'll do. He'll come up for about five minutes or so, just introduce uh, a video, five or seven minutes that he's going to uh, show, and then he'll give his presentation video, because I want our church to get to know him. And I think I'm trusting through this evening, and then also if you'll go back and watch that service uh, from Brother Dan's class, you'll get to know a little bit about, more about him, know how you can pray for him, how you can stand behind him, and uh, because that's truly what we want to do with our missionaries, stand behind them in prayer and support, uh, but then also to be, for them, be there for them. We want them to know us, and we want to know them when they come back through and they visit with us, and so we can be in touch with what they've said. Brother Muldoon, won't you come down, and uh, we'll, um, we'll certainly be glad that he comes to the platform. <laughs> And uh, he's a wonderful blessing. Um, uh, some of the families from the church got to spend a little time with him today and trust that was a blessing. Why don't you share with us? Thank you so Thank much you for so being much. here, Buffalo Ridge. And Pastor, just so you know, it's 245 days till Christmas. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> love Christmas and I, I love the shepherds and just their passion to personally go and see Jesus for themselves. And then after seeing Jesus, it, it changed their lives and they had to go and tell other people about it. And and I just think about the opportunities in my life of being able to be involved in the bus ministry. My wife as well, uh, with her church, was involved in the bus, and it, it shaped both of our lives and influenced us. And so get involved in telling people about Jesus. Uh, specifically, God has led my wife and I to be involved with the deaf. So my wife Marie, here sitting on the front row, um, went down to Honduras as a single young missionary, and then I stole her away um, after God hit me over the head. Um, and uh, so we are headed to Romania. Uh, the Lord has placed a burden on our hearts to plant a church for the deaf and their hearing friends and family in the country of Romania. And then as God sees fit to grow and develop that church and stabilize it, our long-term goals are to train deaf men for gospel ministry uh, within the context of a local church, to be sent out by the local church, to reproduce other local churches. And so how can you pray for us? In Colossians chapter 4, Paul's writing, and he says, with all praying also for us, in verse 3, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. And the word manifest means to put clearly on display. Obviously, when you're working with the deaf, um, it's difficult for them to read. Uh, many of them cannot read lips. And 90% of the deaf are born to hearing parents, and 90% of those hearing parents never learn sign language. So they grow up in complete isolation. And so their community and that visual language that their community rallies around is very important to them. And it's very, going to be very important to us to learn effectively Romanian sign language, which is distinct from American sign language. So pray that God allows us to learn Romanian, learn Romanian sign language, and then to make inroads in the deaf community by giving them the gospel, seeing a church started, and then to see deaf men trained for gospel ministry. So at this time, we'll transition over to show the video. It, I'll walk you through it briefly. It starts out with some more information about the deaf themselves, and then it goes to my testimony and background, and then to my wife's testimony and background. Uh, gives the answer to the question we often get, which is why Romania, and then concludes with a final challenge. Thank you so much. Deaf people are found in every country, every demographic, and every people group of the world. But what does it mean to be deaf? It means to live in a silent community and never fully understand the hearing community around you. It means learning a local sign language as your first language that is communicated through handshapes and facial expressions and therefore has never been written. It means struggling to read and understand the spoken and written language of your own country since you have never heard the letters and many words look similar. It often means you have a connection and understanding with deaf all around the world and yet cannot communicate to your own family and pastor. It means all of your education has to be intentional, but around 80% of the world's 70 million deaf do not have any access to formal education. Due to these challenges, the deaf are the fourth largest unreached people group in the world. Please consider with me the deaf landscape in Europe. Resources are available to give many deaf a means of communication and some form of independence. However, after receiving a basic education, there are few deaf ministries or churches to teach deaf people the essentials of salvation, spiritual growth, and Bible doctrine. 
If they somehow learn of Christ, who will train them to become mature Christians, to raise their children and worship God? Where could qualified deaf men go for ministerial training offered in their natural visual language sign language? Few churches in Europe intentionally train deaf men how to study the Bible, preach, and start deaf churches. Yet, such trained men are desperately needed to reach and equip their own silent world. It is ideal to train deaf and hearing men within the context of a local deaf church to equip them to start deaf churches in other countries. We are Ben and Marie Muldoon, and this is what God has called us to pursue. I was raised in a pastor's home, saved at an early age, and called into the ministry as a teenager. The year I left for college, God called my parents to Papua New Guinea, which not only strengthened my faith, but made missions a passion. In college, God led me to help in a deaf ministry, and there I was introduced to deaf culture, language, and the great need for workers. I went on a mission trip to the World Deaf Olympics in Bulgaria in 2013, and I gained a burden for both international deaf and Eastern Europe. In 2015, I visited my parents in Papua New Guinea for two months and taught briefly at Bimuru Baptist Bible Institute. I discovered my love for investing in men and training them for the ministry. That same year, I was challenged to consider deaf missions by my mentor, David Bennett. After prayer and counsel, God clearly confirmed my calling to the deaf, to Eastern Europe, and to training men for gospel ministry. To prepare, I completed an MA in Biblical Exposition, a one-year ministry apprenticeship program at my sending church, a year of advanced missionary training, and I began to intentionally disciple others in their Christian walk. In 2018, I went to Africa with a team to train deaf men for five weeks and was freshly motivated by their hunger to learn. I am thankful for God's preparation for our ministry in Romania. It's also exciting to see how God has prepared my wife for this ministry. I was raised in a Christian family and saved at a young age. I felt led to missions as a child and prepared myself for ministry as a teenager and young adult. To this end, I was involved in church, took several mission trips, and became certified to interpret for Spanish-speaking patients at my hospital where I worked as a registered nurse. I later joined my church's deaf ministry and led several deaf events. In 2017, God led me to Honduras to start a deaf ministry in Beacon Baptist Church under the authority of Pastor Matt Goins and the wise leadership of Baptist International Missions Incorporated. During my three years there, I learned Honduran Sign Language and Deaf Culture and then trained a hearing couple to start a Deaf ministry. Their training included sign language classes, visiting Deaf people, and attending Deaf events and Deaf ministries in surrounding cities. When I left Honduras in 2020 to marry Ben, this couple continued to develop the Deaf ministry in spite of limitations due to COVID. I'm excited about using what I learned in Honduras to minister in Romania and beyond. Romania is a strategically advantageous location to plant a deaf church and Bible training institute for several reasons. Romania is a part of the European Union, making it more accessible for deaf. Romania's dark history of communism has fostered a desire for things Western, meaning there is acceptance of other religions. Romania's economy is one of the fastest growing in the European Union, but still has one of the lowest costs of living. Therefore, deaf could reasonably live off of less here than in other European countries and even find part-time work while studying if necessary. Dionisi Planton is a deaf man in Romania who's been called to preach the gospel. I heard him give a testimony of being called to serve God but yet he asked a group of deaf leaders, who will disciple me? Who will train me? Who will teach me the word of God? No one had an answer. And that day I told God, with your help, O oh Lord, Silent Word Ministries International will find someone to go and train Dionysi Planton and others like him to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Ben and Marie are an answer to our prayers. 
Marie and I aim to develop men such as Dionysi Platon and deploy them to be deaf disciples. We want to train men in the local church to reach the silent world. This will take time and we will need help. Will you pray for us? Will you partner with us? Will you join us? Tonight, Ben and Marie are going to sign as we sing. They'll be singing along with us, but in another language. Let's lift our voices on that first verse. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy. His child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, His child and forever I am. Redeemed and so happy in Jesus, no language my rapture can tell. I know that the light of His presence with me doth continually dwell. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed. child and forever I am. I think of my blessed Redeemer. I think of Him all the day long. I sing for I cannot be silent. His love is the theme of my song. Four hundred and sixty-five, draw me nearer, nearer, precious I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith, and be Draw me near, 
continue to remember that how important it is to reach the world with the gospel and I'm going to have brother Dan just in a few moments come back and send, lead us again and send the light but before we do that brother Joe Martinez is no stranger to Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church and uh, he's been our missionary for some years I'm not sure how many but uh, then he he came and assisted us as uh, in this as a Spanish pastor we're certainly thankful for the time that he spent being back and forth here between here and home and he's been a wonderful help to us and he's want, I want him to share with you what uh, the latest chapter and he and uh, Miss Nina's life is and uh, let you know how you can best pray for him and if someone have him come share that with you brother thank you for being here thank you preacher yes sir it is an honor and a privilege to be one of your supported missionaries 
Y'all have been behind us since 2006, 2007. How many of y'all were here when we first came here with all that bunch from Chilhau? Will y'all rem anybody here remember that? There's a few hands, there's a few hands showing our age. <laughs> but we're, we're grateful and thankful for all your support throughout the years, faithful support, financial and prayer-wise. We're uh, privileged to be able to take the gospel to the Spanish-speaking people. We had been going in and out of Cuba, uh, but since the pandemic broke out, that door's been pretty much closed. The airfares have tripled in the last two years. So we're waiting on an open door for, to go back to Cuba, but I'm keeping in contact with the folks there and our church plan in Havana. We're still communicating and praying for them. But I want to, enjoy, uh, I want to share with you some joyful news, some encouraging news from East Tennessee. We have started a brand new bilingual ministry in Clinton, Tennessee. Uh, it's mostly a Spanish church. The English uh, training we have is for our, my immediate family and for the kids of the Hispanics that prefer English. But we have come in contact with several Spanish families. I'll tell you, this, with this influx at our borders, be prepared to have some new neighbors that don't speak English beside you pretty soon, right? Uh, and the, gospel say, the Bible says in the Gospel of Matthew in 22, 35, uh, 36, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And we have the blessing and the privilege to, to reach the Hispanics with the gospel in East Tennessee and be y'all's arm to reach these folks that most folks can't reach because they can't speak their language. We started a, we have rented a storefront. It is a 2,000 square foot building. We have worked tirelessly the last eight weeks getting the building ready. April 3rd was our inaugural service. We had a total of 60 people between the two congregations, 65 people, I believe. But in the Spanish group, we've been averaging close to 20, between 20 and 25. So we're excited. We have seen hands raised for rededication. We haven't seen anybody saved yet, but we've already had some folks rededicate their lives to the Lord. And it's exciting to be back in, uh, in, the, in sowing and planting, sowing and reaping in the Hispanic field. And let me tell you something about what happened when we were here nine months, just a few months ago, Sister Julia remembers. Uh, this church was therapy for us because Nina's, my wife's mother had passed away in uh, October of 2020, and we got, came here on board November of 2020. Pastor Herdman brought, uh, invited us to come and help y'all out and lead the Spanish work. Pastor uh, Brother uh, Rogers was also a huge inspiration and help. And we were here nine months. And I'm telling you, this ministry was therapy for my wife and me, especially during the difficult months of the pandemic when not much was being able to take place. We appreciate this ministry, and we thank God for y'all. But we, uh, we are looking for some help and some prayers uh, uh, as far as the, the new bilingual work. Part of this building that we're renting for $1,500 a month, it's, it's a storefront right on Clinch Avenue. Part of the building is going to be dedicated to a Bible distribution. Uh, so we already sent our first Bible to Cuba, and we don't even know if it got there. But we already sent one to a brother that requested one through email. But we're going to be sending Bibles to Brazil and to all of Latin America and Mexico from Clinton, Tennessee. We're going to be working some with um, a brother here in, in Gray that has a huge warehouse of Bibles. We want to help him distribute, and we will help him along down from Knoxville Way. So y'all pray for the Martinez family. It's a blessing to meet the Muldoons, and we'll be praying for you all. Maybe if y'all are still in the deputation a few weeks down the road, come visit us in Clinton, okay? But we appreciate this church. We love you, Pastor Herman. Thank you for all y'all done for us throughout, throughout all the years, brother. Thank love you. you. Appreciate it. Love you. Thank you. There's a call on the radio where the restless wake, send the light, send the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save, send the light, send the light, send the light. The blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore, send the light. Shine forevermore. 
Well, we praise the Lord for the opportunity to send the light, and thank you so much, Brother Joe. He is a, always an encouragement to me, and I thank God for him. Thank for what he's been to our church, and I'm thankful our church can be a blessing to him as well. And it's also been a full night. It's so good to have the Muldoons with us, and I want you to get to know them, as I mentioned before. And uh, the... Um, and the great help that uh, Brother Harrison is to churches is really more than uh, most of us realize because getting good material in the hands of people um, is just, is just um, so, so important because there are so many things that aren't worth having in. And uh, here's a man who's given his life to try to do his best to get good Bible-based material uh, into, uh, into the hands of um, good God's people. And uh, so it's also a joy uh, to have tonight. I missed him last week, but uh, I think that uh, uh, Gabriel Haddon Wakefield is here, right? Is that him back there? All right, Brother Daniel and Miss Becca's uh, newest edition, and uh, praise the Lord for little Gabriel being here, and uh, Samuel, Micaiah, the big brothers back there, and uh, we're certainly thankful for the God's blessings upon the Wakefield family, and uh, what a joy it is to see that little fella. So, many good things about tonight, and I want to share with you um, a scripture that, uh, on, on, the, on the subject of missions, and I'd like for you to turn to Acts chapter 1 verse 8, and then we'll turn to Philippians chapter 4. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, a familiar passage where <clears throat> the Lord told the disciples they would receive power. And uh, the passage that we read is before Christ is ascending back to heaven. And uh, it's giving, it's talking about Samaria, Judea, the uttermost part of the earth. Jerusalem, as you find your place in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, the Bible says this. But ye shall receive power, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. And then you notice that next word, and it's been taught to this church many times, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and under the uttermost part of the earth. Now, if I were <clears throat> telling somebody how to do something, I would tell them to master it first where they're at. I would tell them if they were going to start a franchise that they should get the first one running like a well-oiled machine before they ever start telling anybody else how to do it somewhere else. You would want to get that business so that it was very predictable and duplicatable, if that's a word, able to be duplicated. But the Scripture here tells us that those group of disciples that were gathered together there were told to be witnesses unto you, or come to you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me for Jesus Christ, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria. So I told you, if I was telling somebody how to start a business, I would tell them to get all the kinks worked out, get everything ironed out before they ever started telling somebody else how to do it. And if you translate that to a church, then the church would supposed to be have every problem fixed and everything in line, all the kinks worked out, all the wrinkles ironed before they ever started telling anybody else how to do it. Now, how many of you see the problem with that equation? We're the, we're the wrinkles. <laughs> We're the ones who haven't been ironed out yet. So what the Scripture says is Jesus telling His disciples, I want you to go to Jerusalem. I want you to go bo both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria. Jerusalem was where they were, the words were first given right then. That's where they're at. They're in that area. And Judea was the country, the larger group, or larger area rather, where Jerusalem was. Samaria was up on the north border and a little further on. So they were told that they would reach their immediate area, their region, the little place above there, and then the uttermost part of the earth. It's an interesting pr uh, truth, though, that these four places are supposed to be reached simultaneously. While we're doing it here, we're supposed to be doing it there. And so this, more, this evening... I am trying to get all of us to see that we need help. We need help in the bus ministry so that we can reach people right here. It's unfair for us to talk about society and how bad it's getting without us taking the only hope that society has, and that's the message of the Lord Jesus Christ to where it desperately is needed. So we're shooting for folks to be uh, called to the bus ministry right here 
You have not because you ask not. The Bible says, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest. They had sent forth laborers under, the, under his harvest. And so we're praying for that. But not only are we supposed to do that, if we did that tremendously, if we did everything that we were supposed to do, and we did all that our region could stand, and we didn't go further than this, then we would be disobedient to what the Scripture says. I want you to turn now, if you would, to Philippians chapter 4. And I want to give you a familiar example of just what Acts 1.8 says to do the people at Philippi were doing. So I want to preach a message entitled, Go and Stay for the Gospel. Go and Stay for the Gospel for the gospel. Are you at Philippians chapter 4? Let me pray and then we'll look at that verse. Father, I ask you to bless us. Please clear our minds, dear Lord, and help me. Lord, I pray that you would let this church continue to be a lighthouse for you. Lord, I pray that we'd be able to do more for missions. Lord, I pray that we wouldn't see people saved across the world without us seeing people saved down here in Johnson City and up in Kingsport. Lord, I pray we wouldn't pay for our missionaries to go around the world and that we wouldn't go around the corner. I pray that we wouldn't go around the corner without sending our money around the world. I pray we do it all. I pray that you'd bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Philippians 4, verse 14, the Bible says, Notwithstanding, you've well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but a desire fruit that it may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell and sacrifice, acceptable, well-pleasing to God. And then he tags us on, God does, but my God shall supply all your need. He was saying, I like to put it like this, you think you sent a gift basket over to me? You wait till you see the gift basket the Lord Jesus Christ sends you. You think I got something, you wait till you get what you get. He should supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I want to give you these few moments that we might see our great need and opportunity to go around the world through people like the Muldoons and to stay here in this area and preach the same message that they'll be preaching. I want you to see, I brought you to Philippians because I want you to see here. I see, first of all, they carried the work on in one place while praying and paying for another. I know that's long if you're taking notes. But look back in verse 15. We're in Philippians. We'll stay there. Verse 15. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. They carried the work on there where they were, but they paid again and again for the work to go where they weren't. They carried it on there in one place while they were paying and playing or praying for somewhere else. You see, my friend, we need to get this idea that the gospel works everywhere. It doesn't matter what language it is. You just got to figure out the language, learn it, and then present the same message when you get there. And then when they learn the message and they go preach it somewhere else, then we need to be say saying the same thing over here. And you say, doesn't that sound like a broken record? Yes, but it's the gospel record. There's the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It works every time in the lives of people when they'll submit themselves to the gospel message. And we see that Paul said to this group in Philippi, he said, you were doing what you were supposed to do there and you were sending some sweetness. You were sending, as he says, a sweet odor of sacrifice. You were sending it over to me and you were paying for me. You were praying for me. And this group of believers caught the idea that the gospel message needed to be presented where they were and where they weren't. Because I'll never go to where, as far as I know, where our missionaries are going. If it is, it will be for a short trip uh, to check on them and support them and whatnot. But as far as I know, I hope I would be honest to go before the Lord if He called me to, to go. But as far as I know, this is what God wants me to do. And so, but I don't get off the hook because God didn't call me into missions. I'm commanded to go by some vehicle to the places where need the gospel, and that's 
everywhere. And so what Philippi, the people at Philippi, the Philippian people did, they carried on the work there and they prayed and paid for somebody to do it somewhere else. We moved from uh, Columbus area, Ohio, to down to here. And you know what we found from here? The same place we found in, in Delaware, Ohio, which is the same place things we found in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, which is the same place we found in our homeland of West Virginia. And that is that people need the gospel. They're everywhere. I understand in certain regions of our nation, people are more gospel literate than others, but they all need the gospel. It doesn't matter if you go to five houses and four of them say, oh, yeah, saved, uh, Christian, yeah, my dad's, a, my, uh, my dad's a preacher, my mom's a preacher, my grandmom's a preacher, yeah, I got it sewed up. Well, that may be, may be reason to worry there, but... They may have all kinds of religious jargon and all kinds of things that they know, but you know nobody gets to heaven without accepting Jesus Christ as their Savior. And we understand that these people got busy in Philippi with preaching the gospel. And they also, though, found a, a missionary coming through. And he was going, as he says here in Thessalonica, verse number 16, you sent once and again unto my necessity, which brings me to my second point. They continued in this process for some time. It wasn't a one-time love offering. They said, well, I hope that does you, Paul. We're going back to helping ourselves. How many of you understand it costs a lot to live in Romania just like it costs a lot to live over here? How many of you bought milk in the last month? How many of you bought bread? How many of you bought bread? Whatever you buy, it's all expensive. And we understand that those prices are high everywhere else, but this group of people uh, that Paul has used of God to write back to, he says, you've, you've sent unto me, look at verse 16, once and again unto my necessity. That's why I love it when I see people down the halls of, our, of a church here reading the missionary letters. And so people will tell me from time to time, God convicted me or God led me. I think we ought to give this to certain, certain missionary. And we understand that this process that they carried on to assist the Apostle Paul wasn't a once and done. It happened again and again and again. Let me illustrate. When Amy and I were married, but before any kids came, uh, I served on staff at the church of our home church in West Virginia. And so her nephew would, uh, he would oftentimes go with us and Joel would go with us to restaurants or wherever and we would take him. But you know what's a wonderful thing about kids like that? When you're done with them, you just take them back. Much the same feeling that you grandparents have. You bring your grandkids in, you load them up with sugar, you give them all the stuff that you wouldn't allow your kids to have back when they were in the house, and then you get them all hyped up on this, and you spin them like a little top, and then you open the door back to your kid's house, and you say, now go. And you shut the door quick, and you get back in the car, and you say, aren't grandkids great? But what something happened on August, uh, August 12, 2000, we picked one up at Mercy Hospital, and there was nobody to take him back to. <laughs> Jared came home with us and stayed with us. And so he needed help again and again and again and again. Well, our missionaries down the hall, they're going to need help again and again and again and again. And that's not a drudgery to us. That's a privilege for us to get to serve and a privilege for us to get to supply some of the needs as God empowers and enables us so we can help them. That's not something that we mind. Those missionaries on the board, they're not peeling off anytime soon. If they get off and they uh, get one project finished, most of them, they'll go do another one. If they plant one church and they get it up to where nationals can uh, pastor it, then they'll go to another region and plant another one. And then and they'll go plant another one. I'm saying that just like the people at Philippi, they helped Paul again and again and again. They paid for and prayed for him where they weren't, but they didn't do it one time only. But I want you to see verse in 17 and 19, what it did for them. It brought, God, it brought rather, God's blessings. Not because I desire a gift. Are you in 17 there? But I desire fruit that it may ab abound to your account. I know this church, I know we know this, but look at who the account was going to that those people that paid for the Apostle Paul to live, whose account was that fruit going to? It wasn't going to him, although he was the mouthpiece. He was the preacher. He was the megaphone. He was the one that God was using to get the job done. But Paul said, I desire that so that the fruit may abound to your account. 
I know that sometimes people get pious and they say, oh, I, I, don't, I don't ever want to talk about rewards and I don't want to do it for that reason. I'm not sure why God would put it in the Scriptures if He didn't allow that to be a motivation for us because it, it's clearly listed here. It's clearly listed when the uh, judgment seat of Christ is talked about. And He says here that it's going to bring God's blessings and that fruit may abound to your account. So they took care of God's work and God took care of them. And can I just tell you this? Our, our caretaking of missionaries is not anywhere compared to what God's caretaking ability is to us. But my God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. We try to supply on a small level some of the needs to our missionaries, but we're very limited. Our finite ability only goes so far. Our money only stretches so far. Our missionary dollar can only go to a certain point. But my God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory. God has this circular system where He says, you supply the needs of some of these missionaries, and I'm going to supply your needs so that you can go back and supply some more needs. And then as you supply those needs, I'm going to come back and supply some more of your needs. And then when they get their needs supplied, I'm going to supply some more of yours. And they'll go just in a circular motion like that and say, why didn't God cut out the middleman? I don't know why God does all that He does, but He uses us to help some other people, and He uses those to help some other people, and it's a big circle that God's got. And I'm glad to be a little small cog in that. See, because I not only preach to you that we should give to missions, my wife and I, we give as well. Because I want to have a part of what's going on in the missionaries that you see that are supported by Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church because I'm not planning to go to those places. I, I said I'm being as transparent as I can be. I think that I would honor God. I think I would be obedient if He told me go. But I'm not there yet. So since I'm not there yet, I feel a responsibility that part of my money must go. And that's what happened as Paul was provided for by the people of Philippi and some other churches. But as he was provided for the people of Philippi, then he says that God will supply your need because you have come and you've supplied my need, my in-laws who are wonderful Christians. Some of the two of the greatest Christians I know are Delbert and Helen Norris. And all the time Amy was growing up, they would have missionaries and pastors and preachers and visitors and things like that in their home. He was a deacon for all the time Amy was growing up. Spent, I'm sure, hundreds of dollars that never got re reimbursed, never got um, uh, any accounting for, just out of their family budget to be a blessing to preachers. Not to mention all the money they've given to, missionary, to missions through, through the years at the church. Are they rich? Did God bless them with, uh, with great millions of dollars? I hope so. I don't know, but I hope so. Because I'm married to their daughter, so I'm hoping that it pays off. I doubt they are. But I think they've celebrated 67 years of marriage to each other. I mean, just uh, to one, one spouse. They've got Amy and I. They've got their preacher son uh, that pastors our home church. Uh, their other daughter, Amy's twin, is a Sunday school teacher at our home church in Murfreesboro. Uh, her other two brothers are, have been, if they're not now, deacons in their Baptist, independent Baptist churches. A grandson that's a, that uh, pastors a church over North Carolina. I would say that their God has supplied their needs and He has met their, with, with the, he has met their uh, blessings with more blessings, and He has supplied their need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I wanted to share with you tonight that our job is very simple. We are supposed to win souls in our area. That means get somebody on your heart. I don't care if you're a college kid. Don't care if you're retired. Don't care what level you're at age-wise. We ought to pray, God, let me see somebody come to faith in Jesus Christ. We ought to win souls in our area. And then we ought to be a forgiving, friendly, accepting church that builds up people in their faith. And then we ought to support with our money the gospel missionaries that are going around the world. It really boils down to where it's pretty simple. I told you the other night that I hope that we get the idea, everybody you see tomorrow, whether that's at um, the stores or your business, wherever it is, I'm challenging us all to be soul conscious 
realize that everybody we see is going somewhere forever. They've got an eternal soul. We'll spend it forever. And that's the first step in us reaching anybody for Christ. We've got to first understand that everybody's going somewhere. And we're supposed to win souls. Show them the gospel. You say, well, I don't know if I can do all that. Well, one thing, you could do a lot more than you uh, think you can. You say, well, what if they ask me some hard questions? Well, most of the time when they ask those hard questions, there's something I like to try, and that is, I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> I'll get back to you. If you can't get back to them, have me, I'll get back to them, or have somebody else get back to them. But we ought to win souls. I, my, my heart's burden for our bus ministry because we need to see it uh, grow and we need to see it expand and we need to see it because people are in such need. And Daniel has taken that on and I want you to pray for him. And don't be surprised when he comes to ask you, say, hey, have you ever thought about serving in the bus ministry? I'd like to get all of our routes so that we have multiple people serving so that it's not such a burden on one and still allows us to go and spread out and divide to, multiply, divide, uh, to conquer and divide to multiply the efforts. But I want to see us do it here. And then I'd love to see us do it around the world. Thank you so much for giving to Faith Promise Missions. Perhaps you haven't yet been led to, you haven't uh, given into the leading of God to take part in our Faith Promise Missions program. I challenge you sometime before you go to church uh, early or stay late and look down the hall at some of the missionary letters. Those people count on churches like this. And I'm so thankful. You say, how much does your family give? Well, it's not much. But all of us together... We can labor and we can put in there and we can see missions go forward and the gospel around the world. So I'm asking you to stay and go for the gospel. Father, bless us now is our prayer. Thank you for the opportunity to be in a church that loves missions. Thank you, Lord, for being, allowing uh, us, me to pastor a church that loves to get the gospel out. And Lord, I believe that we're a, we're a church that wants to do that. And I pray that you would add to us. I pray that you would send laborers into the harvest here and around the world. And we'll thank you for all that you do. As they begin to play, and if you're able to, would you stand together? And the invitation is very simple tonight, and that is this. If the Lord is dealing with your heart, I want you to know as your pastor, I'm praying specifically that the Lord would send forth laborers into his harvest. You say, preacher, I can't be on one of those buses. Well, you can sure pray for one. You can sure pray that the Lord would uh, put us laborers and work on there but maybe you can and if you'd consider I challenge you to get with Daniel and let him know that I, I, I'd like to help on one of those buses and maybe you're here and you don't currently give to Faith Promise Missions it's very simple we take the uh, well one of these days get back taking regular offerings but now the ushers stand at the back door you simply mark it on a check or mark it on one of those giving envelopes that you'd like to give to the mission program and when our missions month comes back around later this year you can make a commitment to you and the Lord to say I'd like to give 10 or 20 or 30 dollars a week or whatever God lays upon your heart and those things are above our tithes and our, uh, that those are a faith promise grace giving you can give online there's pull downs for both missions and general fund and other things that we have going through the year but I'm asking you to go and stay for the gospel go around the world through our mission dollar and stay here and preach the gospel. You say, preacher, I'm not a preacher. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to get your salary from a church to give the gospel. Would you come? Maybe there's some other need in your heart. You just want to come and pray. Maybe you want to be baptized. You, you need to be baptized. You're saved, but you haven't followed Christ in that. We're going to, Lord willing, we're going to baptize somebody this Wednesday night. Looking forward to it. I want you to be here for, for it. And maybe you'd like to join in on that.
thank you. you. You can look this way. We have crammed so much into this service, but you know I like to be fairly timely. But uh, we do have some excitement. If you'll be seated just for a moment, I'm going to ask Brother Danny Jenkins. He's our secretary of our deacon uh, body. And uh, he's going to share a few things. I just met with the deacons right before the service. And he's got some exciting news that I'd like for all of us to be a part of. The pastor and deacons recommend that we give support to the Muldoons at $100 per month. This will come to, from the mission fund, and I make this motion. I believe the Muldoons will be a great addition to our mission family, and uh, they're uh, from right down in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Silent Word is a wonderful mission agency. It's also the one that uh, the Galleons serve with, and uh, so we're certainly thankful for the Muldoons coming our way, and so uh, we make that motion, and if you agree with me, we would need somebody to second that. All right, Brother Stephen Gallion will second that. And all in favor of uh, taking the Muldoons on for monthly support, that'd be, as Danny mentioned, $100 a month, uh, $1,300 total a year because we give one extra uh, come December, I believe it is. So uh, that would be $1,300 a year. So all in favor, say amen. 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 All opposed? Same sign? All right. Pastor the Deacons recommend that we give the Haley's in Botswana Africa, $5,000 for ministry needs. This will come from the mission fund, and I make this a motion. The Haley's are a wonderful couple in Botswana. This is the couple that uh, Summer Scroggs spent most of the time with while she was over there, and uh, they've just been delightful. They, they called me about uh, Summer while she was there, I mean, not to report, but just to uh, encourage and share some things. They've got a project. They're putting together New Testaments uh, in some language, the language that they use there. I think that's going to cost $2,000, and I just am a firm believer if, if people are serving the Lord, we ought to get them the need, the things that we can do to bless them. And so 2,000 with that, 2,000 of that would go for that, um, that New Testament project, and then the other three would go for missionary or ministry needs that they have. So we make that motion. If somebody would like to second that, all right, Brother Jordan Smith will second that. All in favor, say amen. 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 All opposed? Come on up. Same sign. Come on up, Danny. The pastor and the deacons recommend that we give the Gilmers in Brazil $1,000 for financial needs. This will come from the mission fund, and I make this motion. The Gilmers are a good family. I haven't met them yet, uh, like many of our missionaries, but because of the exchange rate or however money works out uh, down there, uh, they are about 23% under-supported, and uh, they've seen that come up. Some others have come by. Uh, come alongside of them, but what I'd like to do is, uh, as he just said, I'd like to give an extra thousand dollars because the way that they're seeing that deficit um, taken care of is by churches like ours giving extra to carry them through until their support level can get back up. So I would suggest that we give that thousand dollars just as a one-time gift. They'll get their regular support like we do to all of our missionaries. So if somebody would want, if, if you feel that in that, but the John Young seconds that, all in favor? Say amen. 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 Opposed? Same sign? All right. The pastor and the deacons recommend that we give Junior McIntosh $2,000 for the purchase of a van, toward the purchase of a van. This will come from the mission fund, and I make this a motion. Brother Junior, he's from Eastside Baptist Church down here in Greenville, and but they serve in Belize, and they're driving a, a 21-year-old van that's got holes in the top and bottom, and uh, rain comes in the top, and mud comes in the bottom, and uh, they're picking people up in this, and so they lack $2,000. It's a $15,000 van. Uh, they've got 13000 saved for it, and uh, so I would love for our church to finish that out and give the 2000 needed so they can get that new van, and uh, they've just been afraid to use that old one, but they're picking people up every service to get them in under the Word of God. So uh, we make that motion. Anybody like to second that? Brother Leroy right there makes that second. All in favor, say amen. 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 All opposed, same sign. Oh, good. Perfect. The pastor and the deacons recommend that we give the Bible and Literature Missionary Foundation $1,500 for Bibles for the Ukrainian people. This will come from the mission fund. I make this a motion. 
Uh, BNL, as they call Bible and Literature Missionary Foundation, is a, a wonderful agency in uh, Shelbyville, Tennessee. They're out of a good independent Baptist church uh, right there in town. And uh, they are printing, they've got a goal of printing a million New Testaments to send in churches in, in Ukraine or around the borders of Ukraine into good soul winning uh, evangelistic, very strongly evangelistic churches and church planters and ministries so they can just get the word of God. And uh, so we would, in essence, buy how many, Danny? What did we say? So that I think we'd buy, I think a, a thousand. That would buy a thousand New Testaments that they're going to, uh, as they get a, a container filled, they'll send them over. They've got a goal of a million, 1.5 million, but they won't wait, of course, to get them all. They'll just print them and get us a container and ship them over. So uh, we're, we're, I'm recommending, they're recommending together that we uh, send $1,500 to buy a thousand New Testaments. Let them, they print them right there in Shelbyville, and then they're going to container them up and get them across. So, all right. So would somebody like to second that? All right, Brother Eugene Radford over there. All in favor, say amen. 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 All opposed, same side. All right. Is that it? Well, it's been a full night, and uh, thank you for being a part of all of it. Now, I'd like to remind you that, um, oh, wait, we've got to close it. So, we need a motion to close the business meeting. I always forget this part. All right. Brother Larry Stover, would you say, oh, oh wait, you, Larry's going to motion the other one, and then he won't motion this one. I missed him on the other you don't want to go. He doesn't want to go home. All right. Everybody but Larry and Linda, we're going to be dismissed in just a moment. So, Brother Scott, you making that motion? All right. And then we need a second. Daniel Wakefield. All in favor? Say amen. All right. Amen. All opposed? Well, thank you for being in church. And uh, we did try to cram, cram a lot in. We're just about 10 minutes later than normal, but we had a great time doing it. Brother Larry Harrison is already out there. And I do challenge you to stop by. He'll only have King James Bibles on there and good books. And there's some, there's some um, fiction in there as well. And, and it's not all commentaries and things. There's good fiction books. I haven't seen him this time, but he usually does. And some CDs that'll be good music. And so I challenge you to stop by and uh, buy some things. Thank you for the young men that helped him unload all that stuff uh, beforehand. And... Um, and then, don't forget, Brother Muldoon, I'm going to let you slip back to your table, you and your wife, if you don't mind. We're certainly thankful to have, here they go, our newest missionaries and our mission family. We're certainly thankful for a church that loves missions and loves missionaries. And maybe some of you would like to stop by. I already noticed some of you this morning were uh, slipping them some uh, money just to help with expenses. And so, bless your heart. Thank you. You will never, you will never regret given $20 or $50 to a good man of God that's going through here. And it does my heart good to see our church do that. It's such a blessing. And I do believe what the Scripture says. When we provide for those that are doing the work, God's got a, big provi a bigger provider than we've got. Thank you for helping him. And so hopefully you get to see the Muldoons. And uh, hopefully you get to up and see Brother Joe. It's good to see him and uh, be a blessing to him as well. And uh, we're glad to be in church. You can give on your way out. And um, we're, we're, as, as you give, many are giving to missions, giving their tithes and things like that as well. But isn't it exciting to be at a church where things are happening? I'm just in awe of what God's doing. Thank you for being part of it. God bless you. You're dismissed.
Thank you.